today I'm going to do a video on Daphnis and Chloe, uh, the piccolo parts, the main piccolo solos. And this piece by Ravel is originally a full ballet in three movements, um, but what's usually done anymore in orchestras is just the, the entire third movement, which is now called the second suite. The opening of this piece, where you have uh, coming up soon a, a solo, a couple solos, sets the scene for this whole piece, which evokes imagery of nature, everything set in nature, forests, things like that, where there's characters like Pan and woodland nymphs, and you hear little chirps of, of things in the forest, and that's where the piccolo comes in. And your first solo here, the most important thing is that you go through and figure out your subdivisions exactly correctly. Let me just play it once. The subdivisions, like at the very beginning of this, you have a triplet, so triple let, two, one, two, three, one. Um, so I would go through with the metronome and just get go through the whole solo without all the grace notes. And so it would be like one, two, three, and triple, two, triple, let, one, <laughs> you know, and just make sure you're exactly right. And like another place is at 157 without the grace notes. One, two, three. Like right there, that needs to be exactly on the and of one and not like a triplet like it was before um, in the measure before. Dun, dun, mm, dun, mm, dun, bon. So it has to be exactly right. And, but also being very French, it should be exactly uh, right and accurate, but sound very free and even feel free. Just, also just a few things, um, note lengths, I think are important. So at the beginning of the solo, those Bs, they should be on the long side, a little bit of vibrato. So you're going one. You know, the note kind of bleeds into the next note. So you don't want to do one. It's just, um, it's not beautiful enough. <laughs> the next measure of this, I always think just for my own finger technique, I always think of that, uh, those 30 second notes, with four plus two um, instead of three and three. And then the next thing as well, same thing when you get to that last B, a little on the long side and bleeding into beat four or beat three, the last B. Like that. Yeah, a little bit. I maybe did it a little too long that time. And then this. You wanna, you don't have to crescendo. There's not a crescendo written there, but clearly you need to move forward. Just like in the famous Daphnis flute solo where there's something similar. It needs to have a forward motion. You're going to the trill. And I have a C sharp trill key, which I highly recommend if you're getting a new piccolo. Um, I'm not one for extra gadgets on my instruments, but this is the best thing I ever got. And this is a great example. So you're trilling that B to C sharp. I can just do that. I don't have to do this super awkward uh, pincher B to C sharp. Okay, also another thing about those Bs, you have a lot of Bs in a row. Just be uh, really listening to yourself that they're all the same Bs intonation wise. Da, 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 all the same. And then the next measure, this one, the rhythm, you for the subdivisions, if you're going to three, one E and a da da trill three. It's hard. The way it's written is a little awkward. And I had rewritten that last half of this measure in the pencil that you might that you see here. Basically, that second half, I always just think of it as C sharp like this. That little figure. You do it three times and then you trill. That's really all it is. So you're going in slow motion. 
is what it is. And so I had, I rewrote it for myself. And also on the trill in my edition, it doesn't show that there's a C sharp grace note before it, but I've always played it with a grace note before it and all the recordings that I've ever heard, anytime I've heard this performed, it's always played like that as well. So I don't know if my, my edition is just, um, there's a misprint, but you want it to be, And that last beat, this is um, the tempo really broadens out. This is the moment where it sounds like the sun breaking over the horizon for sunrise. Um, so it's really stretched out. So that last B, you can just make, just stretch it out a little bit. I was saying at the beginning of this solo, keep the note lengths on the long side, those eighth notes. But when you're at um, 157, towards the end of the solo, you'll notice that your eighth notes have dots over them. So they should be shorter, but not super short. Like at the beginning, you're having your eighth notes a little long. You know, yeah, and even the next measure. You know, everything's long, but at 157, when you get to the eighth notes, like I'll just play the last beat of 157. You don't want band short, like, you know, that's too clippy. Still needs to be French, you know? Okay, I'm going to go over this solo, opening solo one more time, and I'm going to count myself in the measure before. Uh, that helps give me the rhythm that I'm going for or the, uh, really the tempo that I'm going for. One, two, three, and. something in there I want to do a little better each time. Um, it's, it's tricky. There's a lot of details you're going for. Just listen to a lot of recordings. Try to hear it live and get the, the character that you're portraying is very important for this. Okay, and then moving on to the next solo, we're still in, kind of in the same scene. This really is a great solo for the piccolo and it should come out in a soloistic way even though it's just in the low middle register. Don't try not to force it, but have a very centered sound when you get to the A that you sustain. And again, try to make it as beautiful as possible. So this solo. Uh, it just soars over all the murmuring 32nd notes of the woodwinds. Okay, so a few things about this solo. Um, try to make sure when you start your run that your first A speaks. Don't go through the notes too fast. It's very easy to want to see it. It looks crazy on the page, um, but it just da -da 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 it should sound just very floaty going up to the A. When you get to the A, for sure do vibrato. Just remember your vibrato needs to be in proportion to the size of the piccolo. So you can't do a Galway style vibrato, super, super wide pulsations, or not the nanny goat, you know, not too shimmery. I would record yourself arriving on that A or this whole solo and see if you like it. If you like the sound of that vibrato, it's fine, probably. But again, it should just sound beautiful and be an active vibrato, but not too much for the size of the piccolo or not too much for the size of your piccolo sound, if that makes sense. So your sound that comes out, let's say, is, is this wide. It's not like a tuba. You're a little piccolo sound. So your little vibrato should fit right in there, perfect proportion. So what you don't want is something, I'll try to do some bad vibratos. This one will be like too wide, too much like a flute vibrato in the bear concerto or something. It's, it's too much, it sounds gross. It's not the right character. And you don't want also uh, like a violin, shimmery uh, Italian opera vibrato. Just somewhere in between where it sounds beautiful. 
an SF sharp, it's very easy for that to be sharp. Just play through the this solo with your tuner on and see where your F sharp naturally lands, uh, intonation wise. It's, it's easy for it to just shoot up because it's a landing note that you hold. If you're just aware of it, never do any rolling in things. It's too much um, disruption on a piccolo. Just check yourself that's an F sharp and not. I always do going down after the F sharp with the real fingering, I do G, F sharp. I have a little five written there and that means this fifth finger or middle finger for me. I just like that because it's a little cleaner for me. G, it's a little smoother going G, F sharp rather than G, F sharp. But whatever works for you, that's just an option. It doesn't really matter. And you can, that G, F sharp, you can take your time, really phrase, maybe two plus four. Um, the last measure, four notes plus four notes. And the last note, E, should be held all the way into beat two with a beautiful, tasteful vibrato. And then there's one more solo. I mean, there's a lots, lots of little things in here that I could go over. But the other real solo is on measure, at measure 182. And I think in the in another edition, looks like I have pencil in here, 155. That's another um, measure number. Anyway, this is where everything's going fast. If you have control of your tempo, if you're doing this for an audition and for your own practicing, just make sure you don't start this too fast. Um, this is played at a whole array of different tempi. So a good tempo is and then when you get to 183, keep it the same tempo, even though it does push through, it, it kind of a cellarondos a little bit, but if you start too fast here, um, it's going to be unplayable and a big mess for your last two measures because it does push through, the tempo pushes through the last two measures, even though it's not marked in, on my part. I would think of that in two sets of four. B, F sharp, C sharp. So you get, you need to get all the notes, even though it's just a big run. There's a huge, like at the end of that solo, I don't know, grand pause, the whole orchestra uh, stops playing. So just make sure, even if you don't make it to there by then, just make sure when the conductor stops that you just stop playing whatever it is you're playing. Even if you're not there yet, you don't wanna have that solo. Okay, so at 183, you can do if it's, if your orchestra's playing it on the faster side, or if you want to, you could do from E, the high E to the F, you could do the alternate fingering, which is just a trill fingering, this middle finger in the left hand, going E, E, F, E, 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 F, E. The F isn't perfectly in tune, or as well in tune because it's a trill fingering, but if you're going pretty fast, uh, you can do that. I think it's, I'd probably do that. For that last push through, I think it's really important to, with your air, not to, I mean, you blow more air, you know, to crescendo, but I think for piccolo, otherwise it's, if you don't want it to be a big spitty mess and actually your air, if you blow too much quantity, if your air is too wide, it'll actually slow you down up here. What you need rather is when you get to the last figure, the last measure, yaga, 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 you need more air resistance. So the air stream gets more compressed, never tight though, never tight in the embouchure or whatever, but compressed air. So with more resistance, like you're playing right up against a wall with your air. Okay, so those are the three solos, three main solos in Daphnis and Chloe. Hopefully some of when I, what I went over was helpful and useful. If you did find this helpful, make sure you subscribe and you will be in the loop for future videos doing a whole series on these practice guides. Also, in regards to these practice guides, um, if there is a section of uh, the piece I just went over, like this one, that I did not get to, like I know I didn't get to the whole ending where you have all the 16th note runs and everything, but you would like me to cover something or if you have a specific question about a fingering on something I didn't cover, just make sure you drop that comment in or question in the comments 
and I will for sure get back to you on what I do anyway, and it might be helpful, might be useful. Or also if you have any requests of other pieces uh, that you would like me to go over and do a practice guide such as this. I'd be more than happy to do it and I'll put it on my list. Thank you for watching and I will see you at the next video.